waiter will be round shortly with your menus. <laughs> I think we're going to cook this al dente. Colin, very, so, very sorry to bother you, but I wanted to send you something I've been working on in advance of our next supervision. Getting anxious about the APR, everyone talking about the APR, and only recently I discovered they weren't referring to mortgages. I thought everyone on the PhD was so grown up and worried about mortgages, when actually they just wanted to progress or something. This is sort of relevant because my poem is about fettuccine, which feels like the sort of thing people with mortgages eat. Or maybe academics after strenuous conferences. I know you're already thinking, why is Maria writing about fettuccine? Like, what's that got to do with the Anthropocene? Maybe because my name is sort of Italian. Honestly though, I can't say much more about it beyond the fact that it appeared in my dream. I dreamt you were looking for poems about fettuccine and rolled over and in the mirror, in the next dream, I was 14 and blonde again and my hair was like a tangle of pasta, and if I lifted one strand, the rest fell into endless loops. Which is sort of how I feel when I think about my PhD. Maybe I shouldn't be discouraged by this dream. I'll admit, I did just Google Anthropocene Fettuccine, and I found a meme called Trump Instant Noodles, which wasn't what I was looking for at all. Anyway, here is my poem, I'm so sorry. Little Ribbons. Here, two strands of pasta diverge, and sorry for each of us. Somebody on Twitter said, your sleep is delicious. And long I spun bundles of light with creamy lexicons of hair and higher carbs, dreaming these emails of curly Italian slogans, seasoned with nutmeg, salt, and artisanal maps. I was reading about hookworms and luxury solutions, ash trees, calorie count software, and stylish microbials. Imagine that ribbon just rising inside you. Suppose it all dies back. They twirl us clean on the end of a fork. We didn't choose them, the people with our bodies adorning their cutlery. My brother went gluten-free for winter. I relate to you aeons later, the annual percentage rate of a poem and one fat egg in credit. The recipe says, what makes the difference is the way you add the parmesan. Less is always more. Please can you let me know what you think of the poem? I'm bracing myself. I wondered if you noticed any ecological flavours or is this pure consumer anxiety? And by the way, the secret is I'm still trying to be vegan and failing at the point of cheese and chocolate. Does any of this connect to our discussion of queer intimacies? I'm not sure. Do you know anyone with a pasta machine? Maybe I should ask the other supervisors. All kindest wishes, Maria. Bonjour, no Alfredo. And sorry for the delay. Almost said decay there. Only hour every hour is a beautiful idea. Was it mine? It's mixing with all the carbs. It's not sustainable for me, but when did that stop anything? I said those letters earlier, right? APR. I feel like don't be anxious about it. Isn't don't be anxious the worst bit of advice when anxious? Bring us a plate of fettuccine and we'll be paper in your hands you could rip us up. I'm saying we like I have influence, but seriously, if anything went awry in your APR, I'd get up and leave this so-called restaurant because I wouldn't care to ingest anything on the menu any longer. I'm now confused whether I dreamed about your fettuccine or you dreamed about how I wanted to read fettuccine poems. Your ribbons. Can you send me over some props, like a big pepper grinder and a tablecloth and a bottle of wine or one with a candle in it? Your poem is gorgeous. Here's my one sentence critique. It should have been an angel hair, the poetry magazine. The ecological flavors are more than a garnish, though I barely touch them myself, as you know. For me, the line about the curly slogans is the dish on which the whole thing slips off. 
The med is a sentence. A comma has curl. As far as imagining the ribbon, yes, I'm with you, I think, but I don't use zero zero grade flour. I prefer a mealier texture. I should give up gluten. I've got this new personal trainer who is hell of a persistent. Don't tell the Scottish Graduate School, but there's a module I'm not sure I got to in supervisor training, so please tell me if this seems way off base. But I wondered if you'd take a look at a poem I've been working on. It's called you know Justin Bieber kept a capuchin monkey? What if it was actually a fetichin monkey? <laughs> Stretching across to somebody who's swimming, or can you protect me with some kind of speedo canopy as per when Elvis got a cough cough, I got a cough cough. I mean, can you protect me too? I have diseases, bread and butter, protection sucks. An email makes me look like a bad poet and bad teacher of poetry. I'm a swishing size of a person, a person size of a swish, and you make me. Or if I could just face up to certain aspects of my life, that cause me a lot of trouble. Less isn't always more, which is Colin. Also, I have a pasta machine, but I'm spread a little thin to use it. A rolling pin can apparently suffice in a pinch. Ciao, Colin. I wanted to say a proper good morning, but I was worried about messing up the pronunciation. I just dreamt I was serving you, plateful after plateful of tumbling carbs at a restaurant. The walls were Eve Klein blue, and they were playing nine inch levels <coughs> really loudly, like in a movie. Oh, and you were sitting with Bernadette Mayer, at least I think it was her. You could tell from the braids, and sharing a bottle of wine that just said, Super Tuscan, on the label. I had been reading a lot of what she says about hunger. I'm so grateful for your solidarity vis-a-vis -vis possible APR table drama, and will channel that confidence when I find myself in front of a panel, tangled, but also I will bring a Rennie's for you just in case. Maybe I need to hone my skills in the kitchen, embrace this chiasmus between cooking and good prose. It's all about patience. I used to work with a lovely Italian boy called Claudio, and one day we were at the park, and he came over and offered us barbecue pasta, and proceeded to read verse from his epic play about the triumph of love right there on the hill, and I thought there was clearly some imperative relationship between the poetry and the pasta, like that sort of desire was only sustainable with carbs, and charred carbs especially. Um, here's a little sappy midweek poem, Low by Ideals. The Guardian referred to a grab-back collection of Bell and Sebastian movies as a little over-cute at times. I think about that a lot, like, apparently they just cook pasta and play with cuddly toys in the bath. Is that being candid? Like when you order the endearing wrong thing on the menu, or come back from the supermarket... Maria, your dinner's ready. Colin, your dinner's ready. 